Hello and welcome to the last Back to Space news flash of the year. As we embark on a new decade, we decided that this episode is going to be a little bit special. This is going to be dedicated to the space accomplishments throughout the entire decade. As you know, we can't go through every single event of the decade or I would be talking for 600 years and you would tune out and I don't like to be ignored. So, let's get started with our biggest accomplishments of this decade. So let's get started with 2010, the year I graduated from high school. Oh, how little I knew about the world. But you know what? Elon knew a lot about this upcoming decade and he was feeling fabulous. On December 8th, 2010, a small little company called SpaceX became the first private company to launch a spacecraft into orbit and return it safely to the Earth. The launch was a certain Falcon. Have you heard of it? But guys, this was huge because this had only been accomplished by the government before this day. And this is what really opened the gates for commercial space flight. And it was also what put SpaceX into the mouth of America. Into the mouth of America. I'm not sure I like that phrase. Okay, let's move on to 2011. As commercial flight was starting, NASA decided to retire the space shuttle in 2011 after 30 years of service. The retirement of the shuttle program was delayed several times before, and it actually served 15 years longer than originally planned. On July 8, 2011, the Atlantis became the last American space shuttle to be launched into space. Mission STS-135 and its four crew mission brought much needed supplies and equipment to the ISS. It was the 135th flight to the space station and the 33rd for this particular shuttle. Now, Atlantis is on display at the Kennedy Space Center. At this point, NASA starts to look at private companies to provide transportation to low Earth orbit for the ISS and future projects. Now, on to 2012. The NASA Curiosity rover landed on Mars. Wow. I love this year because I was actually working at NASA headquarters in DC working on the Mars Curiosity rover itself, and it was amazing. And also look at how adorable this little guy is. This rover mission was to investigate the climate and geology of Mars and to search the planet for signs of life. And so many things had to go right for this to be successful. Okay, moving on. So then SpaceX launched its Falcon 9 rocket and successfully successfully became the first SpaceX commercial resupply mission to the ISS. Guys, this is huge. The capsule was captured using the space station's robotic arm and they stayed docked for nearly six days while astronauts unloaded cargo for the space station. This was the first of 12 contracted flights to resupply the ISS and return. Also, notable thing about this year, remember that skydiver Felix Baumgartner? The guy who broke the sound barrier? Yeah, that happened this year too. 2013. Da -na -na -na. Evil 13. After doing a ton of research, it seems that 2013 was a bit more of a building year than anything. Of course, it kind of makes sense because no one wanted to do anything because it was the unlucky year of 13. So, moving on to something actually cool in 2013. Kepler 78b is discovered! Ha! At this time, it was the exoplanet most similar to Earth in terms of mass, radius, and mean density mean density. Also this year, SpaceX negotiated for the use of the historic launch pad 39A. Since the 60s, Kennedy's launch pads 39A and B have served as the starting point for America's most significant human spaceflight endeavors, such as Apollo, Skylab, Apollo Soyuz, and all 135 shuttle missions. This is also the pad where Apollo 11 lifted off. Also this year, SpaceX launched for the first time at Vandenberg Air Force Base. And there's a couple of other headlines, but you know what, let's just move on. We have more exciting things to get to. 2014, my favorite number is 14 if you didn't know. And this is the year that I graduated college. What a time. Oh, um, actually, sorry, no one cares about me. Let's get back to space. This was the year for the first flight test of the Orion capsule. It was a four and a half hour flight that took the spacecraft on two orbits of the Earth. Then it successfully splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. They said that this success made them extremely close and they're going to use it to go back to the moon. What year is it? That did not happen. Okay, moving on. The European Space Agency Rosetta Space Probe became the first spacecraft to enter orbit around a comet. After 10 years and four billion mile journey, Rosetta sends some pics back of the comet's surface and plans on following the comet as it approaches the sun. Also in the same year, the European Space Agency Phylae became the first spacecraft to make a soft landing on a comet. 
Dang, the Europeans loved comments in 2014. Okay. The Indian Mars Orbiter mission entered orbit around Mars, making India the first Asian country to send a probe to Mars. They're getting in on the action, guys. 2015, halfway through, guys, let's keep going. So NASA's New Horizons spacecraft arrives at Pluto after a journey of more than nine years and 4.6 billion miles. When the spacecraft made its closest approach, it passed only 7,750 miles from the surface of the dwarf planet, and it captured some great pics. Pixar didn't happen, am I right? Also in 2015, Blue Origin successfully launches its new Shepard launch system into space and lands it vertically, making its first VTVL rocket, which of course stands for Vertical Takeoff and Vertical Landing, VTVL, to land on Earth from space. President Barack Obama signs the U.S. Commercial Space Launch Competitiveness Act, also known as the Spurring Private Aerospace Competitiveness and Entrepreneurship Act, or SPACE Act of 2015. This codifies the ability of American companies to own natural resources extracted in outer space. Pretty necessary for the way things are going, if you ask me. Then SpaceX lands the first stage of its Falcon 9 rocket at Landing Zone 1 at Cape Canaveral, marking it's the first recovery of a VTVL stage from an orbital rocket. Wow, VTVL was super in in 2015. 2016, Scott Kelly spends an entire year in space. And on March 1st, 2016, he came back down. If you are not familiar with this, let me break it down super quick. Basically, Scott Kelly has a twin brother named Mark. So they're both astronauts, which is just amazing. So they're both doing shuttle things as brothers do. Then he had a one year mission, a year spent in space. And the goal was to better understand how the human body adapts to lengthy periods in space. Kelly spends 340 consecutive days on the ISS, all while tracking his body. And then when he came back down in 2016, they tracked how his body changed and also how his body compared to his twin brother. Way to put brother against brother once again. And by the way, this brother remained on the ground. Anyways, that happened. If you want to learn more about it, I highly recommend researching it. It's super interesting. Anyways, we have to move on, y'all. We have things to talk about. Astronauts begin installing a new docking port for commercial space vehicles to arrive at the ISS. Bigelow Aerospace launched an inflatable room in the space station for testing. This is also the year that President Trump is elected and his first space priorities after assuming office was to cancel the Obama administration plans to send humans to an asteroid and focus on other things. Blue Origin does another VTVL rocket thing again. SpaceX is doing things, but we'll report more on them soon. 2017, NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson captured the US record for the most overall time in space, landing with a total tally of 655 days in orbit, which is like insane and amazing. Go Peggy! The NASA and European Cassini spacecraft wrapped up 13 years of investigations at Saturn by conducting a grand finale, which is actually really sad. Anyways, it was a series of sweeps through the planet's rings, then controllers deliberately threw the machine into the atmosphere of the planet to protect the icy, potentially habitable moons in the neighborhood from any possibility of contamination. Sad. SpaceX successfully, if I had a dollar for all the times I have said SpaceX is, SpaceX successfully, I can't even say it. I would be a rich woman. Anyway. Anyways, SpaceX successfully launches and lands the first stage of a Falcon 9 that had previously been flown in April 2016, making it, again, the first VTVL rocket to be used on two orbital flights. There was also a solar eclipse dubbed the Great American Eclipse by the media, making it a total solar eclipse visible within a band that spanned the entire United States, passing from the Pacific to Atlantic coasts. Prior to this event, no solar eclipse had been visible across the entire United States since June 8, 1918. Virgin Galactic also said that they have uh, expectations for commercial flights in 2018. That did not happen. 2018. Let's start with the coolest thing I have ever seen on TV. The first flight of the Falcon Heavy, and boy, was it amazing. Remember Elon did that little thing we called marketing? When he put a Tesla in space? What a legend. This was also YouTube's second biggest live stream ever. The first was Felix Baumgartner's Red Bull Jump, which had 8 million. This launch was not only super cool, but it was amazingly successful. Cash noise. This really did break down any reservations about if SpaceX was capable. Also, the InSight finally, after many delays, launched to Mars in May and made a safe landing in November, accompanied by the first interplanetary CubeSat. 
This is also the first year that the Trump administration released its first space policy directive, ordering NASA to fly astronauts to the moon by 2028. Japan had the first operational rover on an asteroid with Hayabusa 2. American aerospace company Rocket Lab successfully launched its Electron rocket from Mahia Launch Center carrying three CubeSat into low Earth orbit. This was the first time a rocket entered orbit after launching from a privately owned and operated spaceport. And finally, Nick Haig and cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin were the crew on board an abort Soyuz rocket. They were due to join the three-person crew already on board the ISS, but something went terribly wrong minutes after liftoff, sending the Soyuz capsule into a ballistic re-entry. They both are alive and well and probably wake up every day a little bit more happy to be alive. And now we reined it in with this year's 2019. This was a big year for space. Obviously, this was the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11, which we all celebrated. Preparations for NASA's commercial crew program entered its final stretches with both SpaceX Crew Dragon and Boeing Starlink launching their first test flights. But as NASA does, they warned that ongoing delays in the program are expected to lead to small space station crews for at least the first half of 2020. NASA is still focused on sending astronauts back to the moon in 2024, which is four years accelerated from the previous timeline. Virgin Galactic gets super cool with new suits and partners with Under Armour. NASA began making repairs on the dark matter detector called the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. NASA said this was the most difficult spacewalk work since the Hubble Space Telescope upgrade conducted in 2009. And it was the first all-female spacewalk. Mars was the talk of the year. The Opportunity mission ended in February after the rover stopped responding to commands. The InSight lander had some serious issues getting stuck in the Martian surface, but it's still moving on. And the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter marked 60,000 laps on the Red Planet. And they plan to keep going on the Martian surface in 2020 to check for habitable environments. SpaceX has unveiled numerous new things, including the Starship, the Cybertruck, and the Starlink internet. All in all, guys, this has been a fantastic journey for space over the last 10 years. I think that we live in a wonderful time where we have seen firsthand the passing of the torch from the government to the private space sector for space exploration. I believe that these past years have been building blocks for what is to come in the 20s. These have been significant, but I don't think they're gonna be anything compared to this next decade. By the way, are we calling it the 20s or is it the 2020s? I'm just asking for a friend. But also on a personal note, I wanna let you all know how starting this channel and having the viewers that tune in each and every week has been pretty life-changing for me. So I just wanna thank you all. I hope you all enjoy your New Year's celebration. Thanks everybody, and I will see you in 2020. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Please go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. We do a weekly giveaway. We did not do it this week because we did a fun little decade series, but make sure that you tune in next Monday because we will be announcing the winner from last week and the upcoming giveaway. So subscribe, leave a comment, and like me.